Okay, I'm filming. So today I want to talk about through hauls. Uh, my son-in-law Louie was kind enough to uh, remove the through hauls from Windover and uh, we had a few surprises when we did. Uh, we found that the boat was probably not really safe so just for the benefit of all our, our viewers I want to uh, go through the things we discovered and maybe you want to look at your own boat and see if you're finding some of these things there. Well, first of all, uh, let's start with the through hull itself. Now that's the, the item that penetrates uh, the hull. Now the through hull is either in a mushroom or a flat form. They have a sealant usually around the edge here and they're held in by a nut on the other side and then on top of this you'd screw uh, some sort of a valve. Now that's kind of the old school way of doing things or let's say the inexpensive way of doing things and a lot of boat builders back in the 70s and 80s this is how they were doing it. Uh, although they had other products available to them this is what they put in. Um, you tend to have this long shaft sticking out into the boat and then on top of that you're going to put a long valve. Now suddenly you got all kinds of leverage opportunities against the hull and this thin little bit of bronze here it's going to crack so if you ever drop anything heavy on your hull uh, or on your through hull rather uh, you can break it off very easily and then you've got a flood so that was one issue above the through hull uh, as we go into the boat they use backing plates that were made out of wood and essentially they were plywood um, uh, pieces that were just drilled out and, um, the, the plywood had delaminated on a lot of mines, so they all came, you know, they were quite inflexible. Not only that, but the, they used silicone rather than, you know, a good bedding material like uh, 5200 or 4200 or Sikaflex or something like that. So, uh, poor sealant, poor backing plates, poor means of fastening your valve because this long stem that's weak, and poor valves, frankly. So the handles on these valves are almost rusted through in some cases. Most of them are seized, or almost seized. And so if we ever in an emergency had to shut them off, we couldn't. And then to make matters worse, on the very top of those, they used on every single fitting a plastic barb for putting the hose on. So over time, you know, flexing those barbs, they dry out. Um, the barbs will crack. So anyway, it looks like as a cost-saving measure, uh, the boat builder uh, put in kind of second-rate material. Uh, we love our boat, mind you. Don't uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, one other thing too is on our boat we've got a strainer, which is a little screen that stops any you know goodies getting in uh, for the pickup for the engine. And this strainer is kind of a unique little thing. It's got some screws and pins and what have you, and uh, it, it's uh, it's it's pretty good actually the way they've done it there's only really one fastener on this and it's a rivet you see that rivet there there are screw holes here as well to put screws in to the hull and those screws are what hold it on now that if ever this was hit by you know a, a chunk of wood or something and it could it could knock it off so say a 
you know, a, a shipping container or a real heavy dock or something that's just below the surface. If you were to go over that, you could catch this edge and knock this off. If you fasten it too secu securely to the hull or too securely to the through hull, you can snap the bottom of the through hull off. So what we've opted to do on our, uh, with our new strainer, which we just bought, is we got something somewhat larger than the old one. So the through hull end will sort of be hidden within this cavity. If ever something hits the strainer and forces it off, uh, Louis's recommendation was to use one screw only and then use a, some sort of a sealant that can release. And that way you're not pulling great chunks of fiberglass away if this ever were to break. So, sounds like it's overly cautious maybe, but probably better to err in that direction. And the hoses were quite dry and brittle and cracking. You can see here this is a drain for the sink. If this ever were to break off, or its plastic fitting were to break off, um, that would allow seawater directly into the boat. So. Very important. Even the connection on one of the sinks was just glued in and I must confess uh, this was my work. Uh, we couldn't get a fitting to fit the old sink drain any longer so I goobered this thing up and uh, it's worked for the last five years but uh, time to replace that. Too. What we bought were uh, through hulls that have bases. They spread the load out more so you're able to fasten them really really well. The new through hull is not going to have to withstand the impact all on its own. The through hull is just used as a you know a, a conduit for the water. It's no longer a structural element in the whole thing. So the nut does come with it to do what these guys did but we just throw that away. So on top for a barb we're using a, a bronze one as well and these are tapered threads that's what it's going to look like kind of an expensive thing to do like just what you see here was over a thousand dollars we say we're worth it and uh, we think it'd be a good idea if you're crawling around in the bilges of your boat have a look see what's there and uh, maybe you want to think about changing over too Well, had a good day on the boat today. Louie's still pounding away. We got a few jobs done today. The uh, backing plates are being made for the wind vane that's getting installed. And Okay, Louie, why don't you okay, explain good. what you're doing? Well, right now I am true bolting the seacock, so I am uh, drilling and tapping and countersinking. Uh, tree bolts that goes through the hull and then fairing everything with epoxy so mm -hmm. doing a bit of dry testing here before sealing everything up there you go i bought some hose that is actually its purpose is for wet exhaust uh, but it's got uh, really good neoprene innards in it. It's made to uh, withstand a, a tremendous amount of pressure for the safety of you know those inside a vessel and um, because of that that's the kind of pipe that we want to use on our sinks. So for the drains we're going to use the wet exhaust.
so that's the stuff right there wet exhaust I don't know if you can see that in focus there there we go Each hose on your boat should have two clamps on it. And the reason being, if one of them were to corrode, the other one's going to keep the hose on the through hull. So I'm using stainless steel clamps. Buy yourself one of these drivers. Uh, makes life so much easier if you're using a slot screwdriver like that. Uh, you're always fumbling looking for the end, but in this case, you don't need that. Now, I'll need two more for the top, so I'll get those ready. When you are putting the clamps on, one thing to keep in mind is that the, the clamps uh, have kind of a little gap usually here after you've tightened this up, you have a little gap there. So it's good if, you've got, if you're clamping two on at one fitting to put one this way and of course you'll want the fitting facing the same direction and put the other one on this way and that way the little areas where you don't get the best pressure will be opposite one another let's put these on too okay. uh, when you're putting first of all when you're putting the hose on the sink you want to take the fitting off, or you can break these off really easily. I'm going to clean this one up. It's an older one, but it's a, it's good quality. And uh, rather than you know reefing on it, trying to get the hose on, take it off, get the put it on, and it's much easier just to screw it into place again. Um, also, a little trick from my cycling days: we you used to take uh, hairspray, put hairspray on the fitting. Uh, we put it on our handlebars. To put hand grips on, and then just they just slide on beautifully, and then the hairspray is actually a glue, so it bonds it. So, little trick. Now, if you're really stuck and you don't have any hairspray, option number two is a heat gun. We can warm the pipe up; it expands, and it's easier to get on the fitting. Let's try that. Two of them. Put my fitting back in. I had to pull in the big guns. Louis oh, yeah. here helping me. You want to heat it up? No, it's fine. I'm just going to try to get that water out of there at least. I put a few towels at least to go in there. It might be coming from your O's now that you opened it too, huh? Oh yeah, of course, yes, yes, that's exactly where it's I coming from. I a few more, but I think it, it is just coming from the O's, yeah. Yeah. If you put those O's clamp back on, should be fine. I'll leave you with that just in case, anyway. Okay. Cool. Yeah, should be good. Okay.